So this is um, question 15 on this LXL unit 1 paper. Okay, you can see straight away this question is about young modulus because you're given a stress strain graph. Okay, stress over strain, that's young modulus. Um, and it's about two types of human bone under compression, which means they're being squashed. Whenever you get a graph, think about what's on each axis. So this is the stress axis, and stress is a force over area. This is the strain axis, which is the percentage change in length. So strain is delta x over x, and young modulus is stress over strain. So um, there's your definitions that you need to know before you start anything with a graph like this. I suggest that you just have a little look at this, and they're asking you to identify and describe one property of cortical bones. That's where the two marks are. Firstly, say what the property is. Well, cortical bone is brittle, you can see that, um, because it does not do any plastic deformation, um, does not have a large plastic region after it reaches its elastic limit here, or its limited proportionality here. And you could discuss those to explain that, okay. And the definition of brittle is that it breaks under little plastic deformation. Okay, it does not have a large plastic region. You, that is probably the most obvious answer. If you learn all of your properties, your material properties, and what their graphs look like, that's what you're going to see. That's what you're going to do straight away there. Um, you can think about this slightly differently, because you could answer this just straight away. In terms of your young modulus, it has a high young modulus would get you the mark as well. Has a high young modulus because the gradient of the stress drain graph is high. And that will get you both mark as marks as well. You could also talk about this in terms of um, how strong it is, uh, although I don't recommend you go down that route. It is strong because we've got a high stress for little deformation, little Compression, you could talk about that in terms of that. But again, I don't think strength is really what you really want to be talking about when you're talking about materials. Um, or you could say obeys Hooke's law because you can see there's a proportional section there. So then go to talk in a little bit more detail about the actual types of bone and it asks you to state the difference between compressive and tensile stress. So you can see here we've got maximum compressive stress, here we've got maximum tensile stress. Well, really, what's the difference between compression and tension? Compression means squashing something, and tensile means strengthening something. But you're asked to talk about stress. Remember the definition of stress? This is in the formula sheet at the front. You don't need to remember this, although it's useful to remember your formula. Uh, stress is the change in length over length. So when we're talking about compressive length uh, stress, then we're talking about delta x being a negative. In other words, Compression is a shortening of the length, okay, or a reduction in length. Now it asks you to say the difference between compressive stress and tensile stress. So you have to, to get this one mark, you have to say and tension is an increase in length. I hope that makes sense to you. Okay, again, use the definitions that you're given. If you asked anything about any of these things, you've probably got a formula which will help you define it so that you're not waffling on about something that's irrelevant. Use the formula in physics. Okay. How would the graph be used? Again, we're stating how the graph would be used to confirm the value for young modulus for cortical bone. Now, earlier on, I talked about what young modulus was. Young modulus was stress over strain. Okay. Um, and actually, that is the y axis, and that is the x axis. So what is this then? dy by dx 
Young modulus is the gradient of the graph, or, and it's only of the proportional section of the graph. Don't write in the margin on your test. Okay, I hope that helps. I think up here actually I've made a bit of a silly mistake here because actually that's strain. Um, so really what I should be saying is compression is um, the compressive stress is acting to reduce the length. Tension is acting to reduce to uh, increase the length. But I think I would get the marks here anyway. So really I should be talking about strain being the force over area. Strain produces a change in length. Compressive strain produces a reduction in length. Tensile strain stress produces a increase in length. I hope that's OK. So this one starts to get a little bit trickier now. A person of mass 90 kilograms, so let's just make sure we know what data we've got as we work read through. Show the maximum weight, which can be supported about 70 times this person's weight. That's what we've got to do, we show that. Assume all the weight supported by the femur is made of cortical bone. So that's a clue as to some of the data that we've got. We've got the cross-sectional area, so that's A is this. Um, Let's have a little think of what we can do. Well, okay, the clue here is this bit, cortical bone. What do we know about cortical bone? We know the maximum stress on that, okay? And we know that from above, from the little table there, and you've just got to make sure that you can find the right um, bit of data there. The maximum compressive uh, stress was... 170 megapascals. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just convert that into a standard form so that it's a number that I can use in my calculator there. Um, now, have a little think what else we can do. Right, got his mass here. I can find out his actual weight. Remember, mass is not a force. So get the calculator out. 90 times 9.81 gives me 883 newtons. That's his actual weight. Okay, so I've got what one times would be. What's the maximum force that this can actually do? Well, I know uh, this number and I know the area, so I rearrange for F. Yeah, times. So I've done it the other way around, but it doesn't matter, does it? Product. And that gives me um, about 62,900 newtons. That's the maximum. So to show that that is seven, about 70 times, I just do 62,900 divided by 883. And that is actually 71 times, roughly which is approximately 70 times. Okay, four marks for that. Um, just so you can mark your own and think about where you are. You get one mark for doing using W equals MG. Okay, you get one mark for um, rearranging and putting some numbers in. Okay, so whenever you see use of in the uh, mark scheme, it means even if you only knew, let's say you only recognised what stress was, then you could still get a mark by having F equals stress times area and putting the stress in the correct place. So you get a second mark for actually calculating the maximum 
force and then the final mark is for the, doing the actual ratio down here. So do think about how can you pick up um, most marks, even if you're not sure how to work through the question. Okay, last bit of this question then is about the actual bone itself. It's stated in textbook that a femur can support 30 times the weight. Okay, so this is different to what we just talked about. We've talked about it being 70 times the weight. Explain how the structure shown in the diagram would account for the difference from the calculated value. So the calculated value was the 70 times that we're talking about. And the actual value here is 30 times. Well, why is that? If you think about the calculation we've just done, it's talked about the cross-sectional area of the femur. And we can see that not all of the cross-sectional area, in fact, only about half it at this point and less here, is actually cortical bone. Okay, so what you need to be saying, you need just to be recognising that not all the area of the femur is cortical bone. Or in other words, just saying that part of it is trabecular. I mean, these learning these types of bones got nothing to do with what we're talking about. It's just applying young modulus here. Um, and if you look at your data above there, trabecular has a lower maximum compressive stress. Okay, the lower max compressive or just max stress. So that would mean that overall the femur is going to be weaker. Uh, you could have said trabecular is weaker or you could have said it's got a lower breaking stress. Um, what we're saying is the effective area of the cortical bone is much less than the, the, the area of the femur, so the breaking force is less. I hope that helps you with your young modulus calculations. Tune in for the next 